Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for um, staying. Uh, it's been a long day, and I am the last one, usually not a uh, very easy spot to fill. Um, so today I'm going to speak about um, attacking and defending drones. There's been, there's several, plenty of presentations um, in the inter on the internet about uh, defending or attacking drones. I, I try to get a, a particular uh, point of view and I have two demos for you today. I have some videos, obviously I have to, I have to do this um, record it, right? Uh, because one of the, basically uh, the demos, one is an indoor drone that I was able to compromise using a ploy, uh, uh, drone exploit framework. And then the other one is, is an outside drone um, that I was able to basically, I created what I call a push man drone fence. And uh, um, we're gonna look at, at this um, proof of concepts. We're gonna talk about what the implications for these things are for our environment, for our uh, companies, for our society. Um, there's a lot going on with drones. And I believe they will be part of our lives uh, even more in the near future. So let's get started. Most of you know who I am. You talk to me in Slack or you talk to me in, uh, uh, in Pacific Hackers or whatever. I'm, I'm very out in the community. Um, I'm Rod Soto and I, um, I'm a researcher with Hack Miami and Pacific Hackers. I work at Prolexic. Um, <clears throat> Caspita, which was a uh, uh, AI UVA uh, startup, and now I work at Splunk, um, and I also worked at Akamai Technologies. Akamai Technologies is a company that sees around 30% or plus on the internet, so I have quite a bit of a experience on, on uh, security operation centers, penetration testing. I still do penetration testing and, and red teaming almost per time. Um, and uh, I've done also quite a bit of a, a threat intel, and uh, um, I also do a lot of investigations in my spare time. I won the Black Hat uh, Catch of the Flag in 2012. Uh, you can Google that, you'll see the picture or my tweet. <laughs> and I co-founded um, Hack Miami uh, and Pacific Hackers. And um, usually me and Marco, and um, Kevin or uh, Tyler, we're we, we're trying to move this on in the in the California and Northern California, and hopefully we we will have good news for you and new things um, soon in the future. So let's talk a little bit about drones, or they're called sometimes UAV or UAS. So UAV is uncrewed aerial vehicle. And UAS is um, a manned aircraft system. So, so the acronyms are used um, differently depending on the context. Uh, but we can all agree it's usually an aircraft without a human pilot. And it's um, a, an aircraft that sometimes have different autonomy. The autonomy can be isolated autonomy or connected autonomy. For the most part, it's connected. And um, usually based on ground-based controllers, consistent communications. So the communication goes back and forth. Um, and uh, we are gonna look at it and how the grace of autonomy can be more dangerous and increase the, the amount of risk that we look at on these devices. A little brief uh, history. Um, there's plenty of history out there. These are Nick, uh, Nick picks that I did uh, for my presentation. Uh, 1800s is the earliest recorded use of a UAV for war fighting, and basically it was uh, balloon carriers that were used during um, the 1800s in, the, in, in, in an offensive manner. In the 1900s, um, in World War II, uh, and, and I, I put this in the note, uh, during the Vietnam War, they were used for recon and attack. Um, it, it's, important, it's important to understand some of the, dry, the drivers behind the, the, the drones. Like the USA only lost around 5,000 airmen during the Vietnam War. That itself is a big driver, right? Um, it also um, came along with a, a miniaturized 
uh, components, right? The development of, of, of how we shrunk electronic components, we're able to put them together, uh, and the development of RC controllers in the 50s, 60s, and 70s is also the commercial spread, like the hobby, RC planes and stuff like that. Then in the 1990s, obviously, we had the U.S. and Israel collaboration, and we got Gulf War One. The late 1990s, 2000, we started seeing the weaponization use and enhanced um, um, uh, command and control capabilities. Uh, and obviously, you know, since the war on terror, which is uh, uh, post 9-11, the drones have been a fundamental piece of, 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 of a weapon against um, adversaries. In the 2010s, we saw um, increased autonomy. We saw the, the first aircraft carrier take off and landing, uh, the application of stealth technology, and increased commercial availability. And during the 2020s, which is right now where we are, um, there's a lot of, of the testing and deployment in the commercial sector. So things such as delivery, transportation, surveillance, media, and home use. Believe it or not, there are, uh, there are right now in data, uh, drums that will patrol your house. Will patrol your house, call the cops, or send you pictures if you're outside. Um, this is part of the future uh, that we're about to see. Um, and um, there is definitely a a uh, a component of of uh, pervasiveness because components, usually like any industry, components get uh, get uh, cheaper, the products get cheaper, and as the grow, the products get cheaper and easier to use they become widespread and with a with a widespread of these products then then a lot of new applications come up so here's some uh, uas uh, milestones right 1917 first drawn rustum proctor aerial target uh, 1950 advances in rc technology and flying systems november 5th 2002 was uh, according to to uh, some uh, historians, it was the first American lethal drone attack. Uh, I didn't get into the specific of this. The links are there for you. I will be sharing this along the video, so you can click on it and go over it. Uh, in 2006, the FAA issues the first commercial drone permits. Uh, you have to. Uh, for a specific drone, you have to register with the FAA. Um, there are some restrictions. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it a little bit. Um, in 2010, friends company named Parrot releases the first commercial Wi-Fi controlled drone. Parrot is a very popular uh, brand. Uh, they actually have some sort of an open source drone that uh, uh, many people are working on it, and we're going to look at it today. So uh, this has definitely helped the uh, the the adoption of this type of uh, uh, um, systems. Uh, in February 2012, uh, 2012 uh, we at Hack Miami did a, created a prototype of, uh, of a drone, uh, and um, I put the link there, you can actually see it. Uh, this was February 2012. We were trying actually to submit for the DARPA, DARPA challenge. We actually submitted um, a proposal for DARPA challenge, and I will tell you more about it uh, later in this presentation. In 2013, uh, first uh, aircraft carrier takeoff um, in the U.S. Uh, 2016, first Amazon Prime delivery by a drone. I don't know why this is not happening right now. This is one of the things that actually I discovered as I was doing this research. Um, 2018, first air, air kill um, by uh, developed by the United States. And in 2020, we have things such as the development of or the delivery of drones of uh, COVID-19 kits in Ghana, for example, and many other, um, many other situations. By the way, I, I actually researched on that famous uh, couple that supposedly was in a cruise in Japan and they got wine by a drone. Apparently that was a prank. That was not true. Uh, so, so yeah, so that was not true. So they, they, the drone did not get to the, to the cruise and did not deliver wine. Um, so here's some of the general components of the UAVs. Obviously, you have to have a body. The body obviously has to be aerodynamic. You need a power supply and a platform. You need a computer unit, which is most of the processing and the, um, the actual um, the coordination of the of things like sensors, actuators, uh, and obviously with the software science. Um, 
you can see that diagram, that diagram, I do the diagram for Wikipedia, I said, this is an overview. Here are some of the general components of a drone. They may vary depending on the brand, depending on the size, depending on the usage. So most of them have some sort of a uh, rotor. Some of them are fixed wind. Uh, some of them have uh, uh, flight controllers. Some of them have GPS. Some of them have uh, satellite communications. Some of them are controlled by uh, Wi-Fi or RC. Some of them have what is called an FPV uh, first person vision. Uh, which is uh, some sort of a goggles that allow you to, to pilot and, and maneuver the, uh, the drones. So there's, there's plenty of differences in components, but in general, you have a structure, some sort of a rotor or propulsion system, some sort of an aerodynamic considered based on weight and materials and some sort of a uh, um, uh, unit that will control the rotors and the and the sensors to keep this thing moving and going, and then it's, it's something that controls it. That's that's pretty much it. So here are the uh, some of the use uh, examples, uh, mostly divided military and civilian. In the military, we have things like recon, logistics, combat, surveillance that we are very familiar with the military. And the civilian, uh, we have industrial, which we have the uh, drones that are. Uh, surveying, for example, uh, power lines uh, or utilities or construction. Like, for example, I, I know of some companies that, for example, if they do your roof inspection, it will probably be done by drone. It will not. You will not see this guy like climbing or whatever. They're, nowadays, they they bring a drone and the drone goes up and 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 they know how to pilot it. In fact, our last video at uh, the Hack Miami conference uh, that we did in Miami Beach. Um, parts of it was filmed by drone. The, the, the actual photographer was a drone pilot. And this is, again, this is, again, the um, adaptation of, of new tech into new uh, into businesses. So expect more of these. Um, we also have delivery, inspections, and photography, just like I name it. Um, photography also is becoming uh, um, it's sort of popular. Uh, there are some available commercial courses where you get certified as a pilot, and then you can, you know, if you know, you can offer to to uh, to pilot for um, events. Um, uh, some uh, news channels actually have hired uh, drone pilots, uh, and of course, you have home for security uh, entertainment, which is obviously uh, uh, everybody wants to uh, have fun with these things or photography, personal photography. All right, so, of course, there are risks about that. And uh, we did not come here to just hear about the nice and the, and the, and the rosy things about these devices. We're, we're, we're trying to look at this from the, from the perspective of risk, from the perspective of being weaponized and used in malicious manners. So, so basically, in, in, if we're looking at risk, um, here's some of the, of the general uh, uh, known risks associated with um, with drone usage, right? So one of them is uh, civilian misuse. So in civilian misuse, you have um, things that have, for example, uh, drones that had hit airplanes. You have um, uh, things that um, invasion of privacy. We have a lot of people that have used. Uh, drones to do on, 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 for example, on, on nudist beaches. Uh, there's actually a video on YouTube of people throwing sandals at it. Uh, some some person that actually basically flew a drone into a uh, some, if a nudist beach. Um, and uh, we do have things such as um, uh, smuggling by criminal gangs. Uh, this has happened in jails, by the way. It, it's, it has become sort of a a um, uh, more uh, prevalent and uh, used in jails because they they procure um, phones, they procure food, they procure drugs. So uh, so these things are able to bypass uh, um, defenses uh, and, and, and at times even surveillance from this uh, from jails, and uh, they're able to do it. And uh, one of the things that they're doing is actually doing it above the uh, across the border. They're they're sending drugs as well. This is this is happening everywhere, but we're not only here. It's it's it's, it's becoming a, a a a unfortunately in the usage of uh, this type of devices. 
Uh, we do have a recent case of uh, alerts done by the D, uh, Department of Interiors, which banned uh, Chinese-made drones um, and, and uh, DJI, um, uh, which is a, 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 a Chinese uh, company, has been has been uh, pointed out by uh, uh, some uh, agencies, including uh, some security agencies, as uh, possibly sending telemetry data that may indicate and give sensitive information to a foreign intelligence service. So this, this, uh, the use of this, um, of these devices had been actually forbidden, and um, there was some a company that was actually donating. Uh, this device is so, so the problem with this, and we're about to see that in the threat surface is that we many times these things can connect back call back home, but we don't know. Uh, and that is a, a definitely a threat vector. Um, and of course, we have the weaponization uh, on the uh, terrorists using drones uh, and uh, I put a picture there. As you can see, you can actually even buy a flamethrower uh, when you have time go in uh, and watch the video. It's pretty funny. Um, this thing is like throwing flames at everything, and and you know, you you put the tech, the humans are gonna find a way to make it crazy. So here's some um, recent notorious um, drone incidents. Um, the one in 2019, which is the attack against uh, Saudi Aramco, I, I and I do have a take on this uh, of what happened, and and I'll leave this for the end. Um, obviously, uh, we saw and this, I, I think everybody looked at it, uh, which is what happened in Chile during the, uh, the protests, which is, as you can see in the picture, there's a number of people directing uh, lasers. Um, these lasers, by the way, can be bought in Amazon. You can, you can get these lasers. Uh, I, I did research on this. And um, if you see the video, you, you, you should take the time to see the video as well. You can see how it overwhelms the drone and the drone eventually crashes. So, so that was kind of a, a cool to see, uh, but it tells you that there are ways to counteract these things. And, um, and just like they're used, the, there is a, a um, number of ideas and people using things to counteract the use of these uh, machines. And of course, we would, with the unfortunate pandemic we're going through, um, the, the Chinese uh, uh, were the first ones to use drones to talk to people and encourage them, quotation mark, um, to go back home. Uh, the Chinese led with this, uh, were leading with this because it was repeated in, in the US, it was repeated in Italy, it was repeated everywhere. So uh, it is there. The, the governments are using drones across the world to uh, enforce quarantines um, and, and, and for security, obviously. So here's a, another sort of notorious, uh, but also an example that these things can be used uh, for very nefarious purposes. The, the one to the left is a, uh, a, a, a drone uh, basically carrying a, a gas grenade um, in Afghanistan. And the right one is the uh, the recent uh, incident that happened in Venezuela, where apparently there were some drones that were targeting the president. The countermeasures work, by the way. Uh, if you actually look at the video, you can see how the drones start moving crazy. That those are countermeasures, um, and you can see how it exploded. Uh, it still uh, it still uh, caused quite a bit of a of a rumble when this was used, but this tells you that these things can be used. And uh, it was also um, discovered that most of these drones were commercial. And that's some sort of what I'm about to get into it. Here's a category of uh, drones. Right? So you have the nano, which is something that is is is, is uh, something less than that 200 grams. Uh, uh, there, the, the places I found this they use uh, metrics. Sorry for, for uh, um, you can do your own conversions to Imperial, but um, the uh, operating altitude is usually less than ninety meters. The range is less than the, um, uh, uh, around hundred meters. Uh, the payload is obviously less than two hundred grams. Then you have the micro, the mini, the small, and the tactical. Right here, we're going to talk about the 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 small. What what uh, I found a mitre calls 
the small uh, um, unmanned aircraft vehicles, right? So this category is less than 55 pounds, cheap to acquire. You can buy this in Best Buy. You can buy this in uh, anywhere, Fry's, Amazon, you name it. Ready and easy to fly. Many of them have free program flying uh, functions. Uh, do a 360, return to launch, um, take off from my hand, um, stay static. Some of them even have GPS. We're going to see one today, which is the one that I used the, the demo for the demo. They are commercially available, no restrictions, nobody. Uh, there's you had to register, but the, the registration is almost like an honor system. I mean, if, 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 if we have somebody that fakes an identity or uses or impersonates somebody, I, I, I'm not sure how accurate that is. Uh, once the person acquires the system, um, some of them can carry a few pounds of payloads like you could see in the last picture. Like the small, um, the very small ones like the nano or the micros, they may, they may not have much of a payload, much of a payload. They still may carry some. But um, the the bigger ones uh, are definitely able to do so. Uh, they can evade most of the current countermeasures. Um, there is no way to, to detect these things. They fly too low. Uh, their fingerprint is also very small. Um, and uh, they're easy to conceal or deploy. Um, actually, that's what happened in apparently in the plot in South America where these things were shipped. Uh, they were they were assembled. They were carried in different places, different different operators took them, assembled them together, and put together the operation. That's a danger. That's one of the dangers of these things. Um, and they can be used in multiple numbers with no infrastructure. You can actually manage this with Wi-Fi or RC controllers. Um, and um, you can actually get a phone with the app, and that's it. You're ready to go. Um, and um, we're about to see um, uh, the implications of 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 the uh, of this um, I guess items I just spoke about. Uh, but remember, we we're trying to look at this from the risk perspective. Obviously, if you look at this from the market perspective, and you're a person, you're a law-abiding citizen, you obviously these these things are pretty awesome. You can fly them. I purchased several of them and. I had a lot of fun and my kids loved them and it teaches in technology, but unfortunately there's another use of this. So here is uh, something that I found from MITRE. And MITRE um, basically has an spectrum of uh, the unmanned aerial systems. So this spectrum goes from the operator's intent, uh, the technical complexity, the, the standardization, the flight controls, the number of aircraft, the command and control links, uh, and the cyber protections. So, so basically, you can have a person that is uninformed uh, and basically flies a drone close to the airport, the airport gets closed. Uh, that is something unintended, that's misused. Um, you can buy a parrot, like a, like a Mavic, for example, or a, um, uh, any other in the same category, and they will fly up to over a thousand feet. So you could, if you're close um, to an airport, you can cause a lot of uh, issues here, including flying uh, aircraft as well. So um, the, the the technical complexity it goes from toys to highly sophisticated. So we have consumer grade things that you can buy. Um, Things that are commercial grade, for example, the the, the drone that our photographer used is, is a little more expensive. Usually, those drones cost um, above the, the thousand dollar mark. Uh, and uh, we had things that um, flight control, for example, that some of them have visual navigation. You can use the 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 goggles. Um, you can use GPS waypoints in some of them. Uh, you have automatic return to launch. We're going to see that today in one of the demos. Uh, and remote control. And also we have uh, a number of aircraft, um, the concept of swarms, which is uh, sending a bunch of, 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 
uh, uh, drones in a coordinated manner or a coordinated manner, it depends on the number of, of operators, you may still pull it off. Um, it can definitely cause a lot of trouble. And depending on what drone you're using and what type of payload you can, you can, you can carry, uh, that's something that you have to consider. Um, and then, of course, cyber protections. If you have anything that is Wi-Fi connected, obviously, Wi-Fi is an attack vector. If you if it disconnects by an RF, RF is the attack vector. If you have satellite, then satellite is the attack vector. So, so, so we're gonna see this in a minute uh, of how on the threat surface. This is sort of uh, extensive, but it's interesting how these uh, researchers divided this in basically be, uh, in uh, between the 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 CIA. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So, as you can see here, um, there is a number of attack vectors that target network stuff, target um, kinetic stuff, target humans, target uh, communication links, um, and um, the threat surface can definitely be uh, quite extensive depending on the number of either components, sensors, and features of the machine that we're looking at. The ones that we're looking at here are pretty simple, um, mostly controlled by Wi-Fi. Uh, the outdoor we're gonna look today had GPS. Um, and uh, that those type of drums, um, uh, according to what I research, are not really a major tread. Can, they can be used for disruption. Like for example, there was one case that somebody flew a drone and there was a president speaking in Europe and they had to stop the summit because obviously they don't know that this drone has something in it or whatever, but think about it. A, a, probably a, a commercial, something that you can order from Amazon uh, disrupted a president's meeting. So um, that is actually um, uh, one of the problems with this entity because they're small and they're easy to conceal. And as I'm about to show you, not easy to detect. Uh, they can represent a serious threat. Uh, mostly, I would say in, in, in the, when we're talking about small, small drones, they can, they can be used, for example, to disable things like termines and the things that, are, that, are, that have rotors or things that have engines where the, where the, the drone can get in and, and, and damage it, uh, or even uh, for assassination. Depends on how clever and, uh, um, um, and how uh, sophisticated the plot can get. So here's some of the examples, right? Uh, how we will attack a drone. Obviously, we, we need to look at sensors, and the sensors we have video, audio, navigation. Uh, you can blind a drone with lasers. Uh, um, you can, uh, uh, one of the theories that I read about what happened in Chile was that uh, the heat from so many laser pointers eventually overloaded the sensors. Same thing as uh, the cameras. And you will see actually during, during my first demo, you will see that the drone actually warns you and say, hey, I can't see very well. Uh, the 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 vision's not the, the uh, visibility is not very well. So so I'm not sure if, if I should. The, there there might be a more malfunctions that's flying. You'll see that I I found that very uh, interesting. So that tells me that if I point at something, it doesn't have to be a laser, but 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 a visual stimuli that is strong enough that overwhelms the camera, <clears throat> I might be able to in fact disrupt the flight of this of this uh, aircraft. Um, the physical ledger, uh, kinetic, right? Kinetic, you can shoot that drone, right? You can shoot or you can throw a net. Um, you can always do it, right? Uh, so uh, there's been cases, there's people actually being charged because they shot at uh, a drone with a shotgun. Um, the link layer, basically what we want is um, telemetry. And in telemetry, we want to disrupt things like, uh, things such as <clears throat> um, uh, line of sight, or we want to overwhelm it, like jamming or DDoS it, uh, which is distributed denial of service, maybe sent several points of stimuli that basically confuse the sensors. And then uh, if there is not enough of, of a countermeasures for what we're sending, the drone might be able to keep its, uh, its track, or basically we'll decide to do an idea, which is return to, uh, to launch on in cases it will crash. Um, 
network layer, we have uh, uh, basically we have to target either the RF component, the Wi-Fi component, satellite, or even mobile, which is uh, uh, some of the things that are being implemented with uh, the advent of or of the uh, the beginning of uh, bringing uh, cellular uh, private cellular networks uh, and things like uh, um, 5G. Uh, so, so those are definitely um, uh, things that we have to consider if we're going to attack this uh, in on the network layer. Uh, in this case, what you're going to see, basically, we're going to compromise Wi-Fi uh, over uh, if it was an RF-based uh, controller, you can overwhelm it, or you can you can use a jammer, or there are certain problems for it. I will go in in a minute. And then, of course, there's a traffic controller. In the traffic control, you have the things, the things like the GNSS, GPS, or ADSB. So then you can jam or spoof GPS. Uh, you can create objects. Uh, with a DSV, for example, that will trigger uh, collision, uh, uh, avoiding collision mechanisms, uh, or if they're using radar, uh, it will force the 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 actual aircraft to uh, to divert. Uh, so that's these are some of the vectors uh, that we'll be looking at. So let's look at how we will defend against these things. Um, uh, number one. It's usually uh, is embedded in some of the commercial drones. It's a geofence. Geofence is basically embedded geofencing software, meaning there is a number of coordinates where um, once the um, the uh, the aircraft detector is nearby on the on the flying uh, system, it will not go in it or it will retreat from it because it's basically marked as no flight zone, and this is being used or. Uh, uh, in airports and is being used for many other uh, events where they do not want, uh, obviously, drone intrusions. Um, of course, there is, again, uh, the manufacturers have done some effort and embed this into their products. However, as we saw recently on Heathrow, uh, Heathrow was paralyzed for, I, I believe, a couple of days uh, because somebody was just flying a drone around. Detection radars, um, which are specifically uh, designed for UAVs. UAVs are usually smaller and um, very hard to detect by traditional radars. Uh, so there is a new generation of radar assistants that are being adapted or created for the sole purpose of detecting uh, UAVs. All the detection systems that I, I, I was able to reach is acoustic. Basically detecting the sound of the rotors. Uh, these things cannot stop fixed wing or free fall rotors or um, or sound that can be spoofed and replayed to actually confuse the, the the detection system. So so the systems have sort of a weakness and it cannot be deployed as a single as a single measure. Radio frequency. Most of the the drums that I look at that were commercially available were uh, uh, using some sort of an RF um, command and control link. And um, this can be uh, detected by different means and they can be a a attacked. Um, we would see that this can also be evaded by going radio silent and using some sort of an inertial navigation system, uh, which is, uh, I won't get into this yet. Uh, and it's also electro optical. Electro optical is basically optical and thermal sensors um, that may detect sort of a heat signature. What happens, uh, uh, unfortunately, with the system is that they may confuse and do false positives with actual birds uh, because of the heat that they produce. So here's um, uh, defense uh, of some of the uh, tools for defense. And uh, we have things here such as the um, uh, jamming the C2, you can jam the C2 by using a some sort of a gun. This this is actually available. You can look at it and in it. Um, and usually the frequencies that some of these drones fly is actually 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, so basically, what you have is some sort of a a device, and that looks almost like a Yagi antenna attached to some pump stock that is basically targeting. A drone and 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 attempt to to uh, basically disable it. Uh, like I said before, 
depending on the system that you're targeting, this may work or not. Um, also, like I said before, you can attempt to um, tamper with um, uh, global navigation system jamming. The problem with doing this is there might be collateral damage, uh, like people are driving around will be affected. Airplanes that, are, that rely on this might be affected. Um, a lot of this stuff, by the way, that I'm saying is borderline, um, can get you in legal trouble. So I personally wouldn't do these things unless there is a, a rules of engagement in a legal, uh, in a legal context that allows to do this. So always consider that in mind. I get a lot of sometimes calls from 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 uh, um, friends and colleagues that tell me, "Hey, I got this problem." At one time, somebody called me, asked me, uh, "We got this person that's constantly flying their drone above uh, close to our building. We think he's trying to crack Wi-Fi or take a look at some of our products." Um, when you do this type of things. Uh, you always have to consider the legal framework because you don't want to get in trouble, obviously. And if you use a countermeasure that is overwhelming, there might be collateral damage, and the, and the collateral damage may bring legal consequences. So be careful with this. Um, also, you have uh, the uh, ADSB, which basically I think somebody spoke today about this uh, during the SDR talk at Hack Miami. You can generate. Um, uh, fake aircraft via SDR. There are several SDR available. I will show you a picture of some of them. Um, to overwhelm the radar, it triggered collision avoidance systems. We had a presentation in Hack Miami 2017 by Willsnet. Uh, there's the, the YouTube link so you can see it. It's something that you, that you should definitely review. So, of course, the kinetic defense, you can, you can shoot the drone for it. You get that. That looks very silly, but hey, you can still do it. There is, you can throw like a net on it, and then um, you know, uh, who knows? Maybe there's an explosive when you go and pick it up. So I'm not sure about these things, but they still of course you can still use them. Uh, here's something that I wanted to talk to you about, um, and that is um, you have to be careful of the counter countermeasures. So the counter countermeasures <clears throat> are things that, that, that can be used to bypass many of these defenses that we looked at. You can put all those defenses together, um, but there's still there's still the counter countermeasures that may allow malicious actors to go through and, and be successful in their attack. I put a picture there of what you see there is supposed to be a, a Huvi uh, kamikaze uh, drone. Now, as you can see there, it's fixed wind, right? So when you have things like fixed wing, inertial uh, navigation system or INS, um, embedded autonomous navigation, multi-layer sensor, um, botnet mesh-like resilience. We actually proposed this in uh, DARPA challenge in 2012. In 2012, we made a proposal <clears throat> of botnet drones that we're going to use Basically, we're going to emulate what SUS, uh, the SUS malware did, the SUS uh, uh, P2P, which basically, as, as one of the C2s falls, then the other one takes over. And then if you have a mesh network, you can always bounce around the C2 in, in a way that the, the botnet continues to be operated. That, that this is a, a botnet type of countermeasure um, technique, which is not new. Um, and we proposed this in uh, uh, during the DARPA challenge. By the way, we're going to make a bunch of drones off the shelf and uh, uh, and uh, develop the software based on, on some of the partners that we were looking at. We, we were not affected, so unfortunately, we never saw fruition of this. But that's definitely something that will, uh, if you're using, for example, a group of drones or what I call the, the swarm, uh, if you use something like a uh, mesh like C2 peer to peer. Uh, command and control, where you can actually extend the range of it, even if one of them case gets taken down, or the the C two link to the controller gets taken down. That's that definitely increases the chances that attack will be successful. 
Same thing with um, a fixed wing. Fixed wing systems can, for example, glide. And even if you turn off the entire system, it will still fly uh, and it will still go through, which is what I think happened in the uh, incident in uh, Saudi Aramco. I believe that the, uh, these individuals used drones that were fixed wing that had embedded uh, navigation systems. They had, they had to have some sort of a uh, recon, a target. Um, and then once they, they got close to it, they must have turned off every kind of, of signature. What are the signatures? Heat, propulsion, noise, um, and they bypass a number of countermeasures, including a Patriot, a patriot uh, uh, defense system. Uh, so this is to tell you that these things can succeed and can bypass uh, defenses of, uh, of against uh, or countermeasures against drones. So this is a, a clear and present threat um, that can that can be used by malicious actors. And we had to pay attention to this. Uh, there had, I'm sure there will be a market developed around these things. There is already, uh, but right now, uh, several of these uh, uh, devices can be successful uh, um, uh, if if we have a clever and sophisticated enough adversary to perform an attack. And and the the Houthi uh, Kamikaze drone is a proof of that. That you, you couldn't get. You couldn't get more uh, 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 more defenses that the the Saudi Aramco will have, right? So, all right. So here's some of the tools. Um, I told you I was going to give you some pictures of of um, the uh, the available uh, stuff in the in the market. So obviously Hacker F is one of them. I have one. It's it's, it's a nice uh, uh, research tool. Um, I don't think it's that powerful uh, to create, for example, a drone fence or or to emulate a, a, a gun shooting, uh, put like a Yagi on it and target a drone. Uh, my my research did not produce, uh, a, 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 let's say, uh, successful results using this as a countermeasure. Uh, there are yeah, uh, jammers. You can you can use jammers as well. Again. Uh, uh, the jammers, be careful with jamming. Jamming can get you in trouble. So if you're going to use this or you're going to place, there's a security um, uh, context and legal context that allow you to do these things. Like uh, that, this has to be in a context where it's lawful. So you, you just can get in and say, I don't want people to fly above my house. It's just going to put a jammer. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, by the way, uh, during my Capture the Flag games, I seen people jam the actual spectrum. Like I couldn't post to Twitter that people could not um, actually uh, do research. Uh, the Wi-Fi died. And I had warned people, this is illegal. You can't do that. So I don't know, you might be in one country where this is legal, but, but in the United States, this is not legal. Be careful. Again, I cannot emphasize this enough. So, so these are some of the toys. I guess I call some of the toys because they're not really production. Don't rely on this. If you want to do some research and you are like, for example, in a law enforcement organization or you're in a, in a big organization, you, you, you want to use commercial grade stuff and you want to test it. Um, if you are a researcher and you and you and you want to test these things against certain things, then yeah, there's a value. But but I I my experience is that these things, even though they're available, uh, they're not. How can I say this? They're, they're not equal to the threat that we're facing. And there's a presentation from Henry Sekovi uh, in uh, Hack Miami that I uh, that I suggest you to watch, where he goes more in depth of some of the. Uh, the things that are available for uh, uh, countering drones. So here's some of the interesting uh, tools. One of them I'm going to use today, and one of them is uh, drone exploit, uh, which uh, targets and attack drones, mostly nano. Um, if you remember the category that we have, we're going to be targeting nano drones. Um, there's also drone jack, and there's also skyjack. Some of these target obviously uh, manufacturers um, in. These are the things that you can look at. It may give you some ideas for attack vectors, and uh, uh, it, it may give you some educational 
knowledge about how, uh, some of the things that we had discussed about uh, targeting these uh, systems. So here's, let's go on the demo. So here's my first demo. My first demo is um, a, a DJI Tello, which is a, a, an indoor, it's, it's an indoor drone um, nano, uh, has a video resolution of 720p, it can fly up to 100 meters. It weights around 80 grams. It can fly around 10 minutes, not 13, around 10 minutes. It can go up to 29 uh, uh, kilometers per hour. Um, that I haven't tested. And it can, it can fly up to 100 meters. That I did not test either. Uh, but it depends mainly on Wi-Fi. So here's a screenshot so you understand the video. Uh, what you see on the top left is me using uh, Kali. On the top right is drone exploit, and on the, the bottom right is the, uh, the actual video from the drone. So let's watch it. Let's see if I can uh, just go straight into it. Can you guys see my, see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. All right, so, all right cool. So here's a video. Let me explain it. YouTube too. So here it goes. There's no audio, so I can I can go and talk about it. So what you see below is basically the operator. The operator, which was my girlfriend, and she very nice of her to help me. Uh, basically uh, connects to the drone. The drone is on top of the table, as you can see. Now we have connection. We can see the video. Look at that. It gives you a warning. It tells you the ambient light is too weak. And now I ask you to take off. Drone takes off, and as soon as the drone takes off, I run the, the, the attacking framework. With the attacking framework, basically what I'm doing is trying to find the link between the cell phone and the drone, right? So this is a Wi-Fi attack. Um, basically, uh, the most of this um, off-the-shell uh, uh, indoor and some outdoor drones have uh, passwords that are too easy, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can use things such as Wi-Fi or, or you can use aircraft and G. Um, and basically, you can be authenticated or you can even guess the password. And with a framework like what you're seeing there, uh, you can take over the drone. And as you can see, the, the drone is flying. And I am basically... Uh, um, changing commands and changing my my nick in order to be able to connect to the drum i connect to the drum as you will see in just a second and then eventually i issue a command to uh to do an emergency landing and once that happened you'll see the, the drone drop and then you'll see how the video goes away um so you, this should happen soon you notice that there's a warning about interference Right? That is basically the network card. You can use this with a network card that you can inject a package, uh, or basically an alpha, or some of those TP links are actually pretty good. And um, we should be able to see the, 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 drop, uh, the drop of the drone in just a second. Watch how the, uh, the video goes away and the drop falls. Um, and there's the command. This is available on GitHub. You can download and run it on, on, on Kali. Uh, obviously, this was done within my home. So this is a, 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 a proof of concept again. And uh, it, as you can see, it wasn't that easy. It took several attempts, um, but eventually I was able to connect and then execute the command. So you see the drone drops. Um, you can also connect and turn it back on. Uh, so why did this happen? This happened for two reasons. Uh, the, the authentication uh, was weak, uh, even though you can actually perform all the Wi-Fi uh, attacks and you can still be successful. Um, and two, uh, they rely only in Wi-Fi. So that is uh, my, my first proof of concept. Uh, let me go back to... Here's the, the link, it will be available tonight. Here's my second demo. So in my second demo, I wanted to use an outdoor drone. Uh, I don't have enough budget to 
by myself, like a big, big drone, and most of them use RF. Uh, and I really didn't want to get into the RF business for now. I wanted to, I wanted to target the Wi-Fi first, and then I want to look at the RF. I know the the RF needs to be do, done in a much more controlled environment. Um, uh, so I um, was able to find this drone, which is uh, pretty cool, by the way. Uh, this drone is called the Simi drone. Unfortunately, the, the company went out of business, but it has GPS and Wi-Fi. And then what we're gonna see here, this drone was produced in 2017. Uh, and I don't, actually, I don't take, uh, I've gone out and, and, and took some nice, uh, uh, taking some nice uh, uh, shots and, and it's, uh, it's actually a pretty nice uh, drone, uh, but relies on Wi-Fi, right? So although it relies on Wi-Fi and also relies on GPS. So there's just two, two attack vectors that you can address there. Um, I, like I said, again, I, we looked at the GPS, the GPS did not work. Uh, and I believe because it relies a lot of what the phone is sending. Uh, and I believe the, the hacker F is, is simply not, it's not there. I mean, the, the, like if you actually go on and look at some of the, the, the stuff that you can do with GPS with the hacker F, you basically have to put the target right on top of it. So, so there's, there's no much, like I said before, be careful when you're using this thing. So as, it's not really what sometimes they're advertised for. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, uh, we I targeted a uh, a outdoor GPS uh, uh, Wi-Fi CME drone. I put the the actual um, links so you can uh, buy it yourself if you want to experiment and play with it. It's it's a nice drone actually. It does a nice 360. You can take pictures. It will allow you actually to connect two phones to it. One of them can uh, um, uh, navigate it. The other one can look at the camera. So this, are, this is cool stuff. Um, so with this, let's look at the second one. So the second one, once again, I got some uh, hat set stuff here. So in this case, um, on the top left, the outside camera, this, this, we put this, uh, we did this outside and we put it right into a, uh, um, close to a, a pound, uh, close to a, sort of a little lake. So in case something went crazy, went through the water, we didn't want to affect anybody or hit anything. Um, so then you see on the top left, um, the, the, the camera, the camera of the drone. Um, and then you would see that eventually the drone hits the top height I execute the attack, uh, which is basically a disabled Wi-Fi. You will see how the Wi-Fi is disabled, and then the drone does an RTL, which basically goes back and lands again. You see, this is outdoor mode. Drone goes up. That's me. And that is the antenna that I use. I use an outdoor Wi-Fi antenna. I think I overwhelm it, to be honest. And there's the drone landing again. And that's, that's what I call a pushman drum fence. Uh, so um, this thing can go actually way higher. Uh, but again, you know, I only have one drone, <laughs> not much of a budget. So we sort of did this. Uh, uh, we wanted to, to research what was going to happen, but I also couldn't afford to start buying drums because it's expensive. Um, so um, uh, let's see if we can get back here. So that's uh, my second drone. Uh, this will be published, uh, and there's the, the 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 link. And with that, uh, I'll open it for questions. And I'll thank you very much. I hope this was worth your time. No questions. I think the, some of them you uh, already covered, like. The first one I see here is why did multiple green lasers cause a drone to crash in South America? I think you you already can answer that one. The, the, the lasers basically overwhelm. There, there are several theories. One of them is that the operator uh, could not see. The the other one is uh, um, the other one is the the sensors that heat up. Uh, and that was kind of crazy because if you actually look at the video, there's so many of them that it must have gotten uh, very hot and that may have taken the actual drone down. Uh, 
Let's see what we got. Um, uh, let's I can actually uh, talk about the last one. The la last one is from Lenin. Is there a restriction to transport drones on the airport? Like in your carrier? Your... No. No, there's... I know. No, that I know. Um, no, actually, uh, I do have two drones as well, but they were actually expensive drones. And I'll tell you a funny story. Um, there, there used to be a balloon race um, where I used to live. And uh, recently, that I'm talking about like 2014, 2013. I, I recently bought a, one of uh, the the DJ, DJI drone to me, whatever. And I was so smart to take it to the balloon race and did a flyover and started, you know, basically recording 4K all the balloon races until suddenly I got from the speaker, um, you know, we noticed a drone. Uh, <laughs> can you please take it down? It's and good. I did, but they actually, they did push it like it came back to me and I, at that point I didn't have control of it. But then after that, my, my drone stopped working. And, right. um, and I, I couldn't make it fly anymore. So I took it to DAI support. They have to exchange the whole motherboard. But oh, up cool. until now, I still don't know what exactly happened, what they did to it. I mean, I can understand they, 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 there was a jammer other than that, I, I don't know what exactly they did uh, to actually kill the motherboard. Because after that, the, the drone was not useful. You know, I couldn't use it. Uh, and then going, Sorry. then going back to the question, I mean, I, I, I traveled with that drone to, to different countries, um, like Mexico, for example. I, I did some video shooting over there and, and to different states in the U.S. I, I never had any issues. I mean, they always obviously they always questioned what it was, and and back in the day, it was kind of like a new new thing on drones. So they always, you know, always took it out, you know, asked me what it was and and stuff like that. But um, that's basically it. Um, no, no major issues. Right. The same thing with the batteries. The batteries are considered. It's almost like when you. I mean, I, I, when I travel, like when well, most of us travel, DEFCON, you know, if, if uh, there are things there that are much more dangerous than, <laughs> than, than drums, like all kinds of electronic equipment, badges and stuff. But they usually treat that like TSA will check it, but if there is, they will check it for explosive and stuff like that. But other than that, there's really no restrictions. There's just really no restrictions. Uh, the airspace above you, I think there is a limitation and, and that's how the paparazzis get around it, just so you know. Um, there is a limitation of how high uh, is your space. I don't have it with me. I can look. I can look it up. But I did look up that I noticed that some of the the, the paparazzi were actually uh, playing with that limit in order to fly above some celebrities. Yeah. So back when uh, DAI started gaining like uh, uh, you know being noticeable about their drones, you know people start buying them. So I, I remember that's. Also about the time the FAA started asking uh, people who were buying drones to basically race them, otherwise you couldn't fly them. Uh, also back in the day, there was a, a case where someone, uh, a guy, and this is uh, this guy was actually filming this uh, teenager, uh, you know, swimming in the pool. So the dad went out and shoot the drone. Uh, well, the 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 guy who actually had the, the drone filming for purposes that for his own, he, he did not get in trouble, but the dad did because he shot the drone. Uh, so there's always a gray area between um, what you're filming. I mean, actually, if you go to the FAA, now there's actually more explanation of, of what you can do and where you're not, where can you fly, where can you not. Uh, also, you mentioned the geofencing. So now, all, all the software that comes with the, um, the you know, uh, you know, they have like the GPS coordinates, like you mentioned. Uh, but uh, you cannot shoot the drone. However, you can put a, a, 
jammers, like to basically not to to go to that area basically. But again, it's all almost like the same thing. If you ask me, uh, it's in the gray area. So right. that's how I see it. Right. There is there's still a lot. Uh, <clears throat> there you go. Let's click on that. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a. So, prohibit the use of drone to capture photographs or video of person that violates their their privacy, such as drone spy on celebrities. That's oh yeah. No. Yeah, and, and obviously that one. That's because you know Hollywood, right? So, uh, <laughs> that was pretty much like the first one. By the way, they just arrested somebody during the Super Bowl, by the way, in Miami Beach, that was flying a drone uh, because they were trying to get all this. That footage is a lot of money. Right, um, exactly, and that was the, the the other thing too. I mean, the, the first the first time when they come up with the uh, the laws, they said it was because of um, you know you can cause harm, like physical harm, not really about copyright or anything like that. But as you know, the laws progress, and as you know, people with money start at, you know saying all these things. Now it became like a copyright. It became like something along the line uh and yeah uh yeah I, I can imagine so thank you alex for posting that also uh i see there that it says the law passed uh in 2016 makes it a misdemeanor to interfere with any emergency services well uh if you guys saw my my uh actually my first uh slide is is about a an ad from california uh, that basically says, if you fly, we can't, which is this one. And it's because during the fires, uh, during the wildfires, uh, there was a lot of amateur uh, people filming uh, and flying drones. And then there was a problem flying the helicopters. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's important. And uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, any other questions? I don't see any other questions, uh, unless I miss something. Uh, so, uh, if there is no more questions, my, uh, my, um, slides will be posted, uh, tonight on 8 PM, um, uh, Pacific. And, uh, I'll thank you very much for staying this late. Uh, I know it's been a very long day today uh this um it's been quite a bit of a uh a day i hope everybody enjoy it thanks to lenin uh and thank you thank you thank you you are the guys that make this possible join the slack join us we some of us are jumping for now to that cdf channel and we're gonna keep pounding that hack aside and see if we can get somewhere uh and uh again thank you very much for attending and uh We'll see you soon. We're going to, I'm not sure if the person that's supposed to speak on our next meeting is here. It was about Nessus. Um, but if not, we will find a, 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 a presentation soon. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll commit now. Uh, I'll do the, uh, the DDWRT, which is the, uh, continuation of, uh, Phil Morgan's on Wi-Fi. Uh, I, you know, there was a. For the people who attended that um, meeting, you know, some people were asking things you can do with uh, uh, with your current Wi-Fi uh, web access point, and you know there was a discussion on uh, DDWRT, and and some people didn't know about it. So that's when I said, well, basically, a DDWRT is turning your you know hundred hundred dollar uh, web access point to a thousand dollar web access point you know because now it will give you more capability so it looks like people were um you know were asking about it so i'll, I'll do a presentation on that uh now i don't have the date yet but that's next either it will be on uh the sixth or the the weekend after that i don't know yet right, right we we did a lot of presentations during may uh, so we had June, July, we were supposed to have the pre-DEFCON meeting and 
obviously there's not going to be DEFCON, uh, but there will be there will be villages. So maybe we can come up with something, guys. So so stay tuned um, and hope you guys join the Discord. Uh, send me an email for the Slack. And uh, again, thank you for your time. This is all about you, and uh, uh, this, this we are gonna we will have surprises hopefully uh, for you and better things to come once things are are normalized. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, Alex, uh, for a great presentation and see you guys next time. Bye -bye. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye.